this was big for me, but I went up to her and I said, if I see you talking to him and I said these words verbatim, the shit is going to hit the fan. Hello and welcome to the Roast of Your Teenage Self podcast. I am your host, your roast coming queen, a girl who convinced her parents to name her dog Knoxville after Johnny Knoxville without telling them what it was about, Elise Morales. And with us today, guys, we have such a funny comedian. She's a stand-up. She's a writer. You've seen her on Comedy Central. You've seen her all over the place. Her one-woman show, It's Christy Bitch, was like my favorite thing in the world. But before all of that, she was a graduate of Pilgrim High School. It's Christy Cello. Yay. Hello. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. Did you really name your dog Knoxville? Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love that. I loved Johnny I know. Knoxville. And can so I say, yeah. when we had Steve-O on this podcast, I chickened out and I didn't tell him because I just <laughs> felt like I felt like it wasn't the vibe. And I I was like, I think that if I tell him this, he's going to think it's really weird. <laughs> Maybe next time. It's a great name for a dog. It no really offense was. to him, but it's a really good dog name. It really was. And um, it like led a lot of people to ask us questions because they would be like, oh, so are you guys from Tennessee? And my parents would be like, no, we're from New Jersey. <laughs> like. This is actually apparently a show that our 13 year old daughter is really into where guys staple their dicks to each other. (laughs) Oh God, it was such a defining show of, of my teenage years and apparently yours too, even though I think I'm a lot older than you though. I think I'm 30. Okay. I'm third. I just turned 35. So not, not that much, but it's, but I, you know, it is a different relationship to have with jackass when you're 20 versus 15. Yes. So (laughs) I, it it was very subversive for me to be into jackass. And I, I wanted them all to be my boyfriend, which is like, why was that the response that I was having to (laughs) what they were doing? (laughs) And this makes me feel so old because now I just look back, especially at like, Bam Margera's show and I just think about how how badly I feel for his parents like when he was constantly pranking them I thought it was so funny at the time and now I look back and think oh my god like (laughs) they didn't ask to be on the show yeah like uh, like this woman's coming home to like an alligator in her house and (laughs) she's just like a woman Oh, I was so in love with Bam Margera. And I remember I got in trouble (sighs) in, um, in eighth grade because I did a, we had to do a presentation on a sport and I picked skateboarding. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Cause I'm fucking cool. So So I picked skateboarding so that everyone, so that I could telegraph to everyone that like, I'm not into sports. I don't know about sports. I like skateboarding, even though I could not skateboard. So I like, question, you didn't even know how to skateboard. Oh, no. No, oh one Christmas God. my dad bought me a skateboard that was called Skater in a Box. <laughs> and- like skating for dummies. <laughs> yeah. Oh my and, God. And I learned how to like go down my street on it. And then I kind of got to the point where it's like you get to a point where you're gonna have to commit to falling down and hurting yourself. And I yeah. just couldn't commit to that uh but I I did this presentation on skateboarding and I included a picture of Bam in my little like presentation and his pants were like down really low so you could see like the v of his crotch yeah and I got in trouble and I got told that I had to take it out of the presentation really and it's funny because it didn't even like really serve. Rep- was it just because he was hot? Like it was just like no, an eye I just candy? thought it was a cool picture of Bam. <laughs> I like hadn't even noticed that. And then my teacher like came over and was like, "You put like a sexual image." In your- oh <laughs> in my god! And I was just like, "No, this is just a picture of Bam that I got on the internet." I didn't even. Maybe I your teacher even- was your teacher a guy or a girl? Girl. Maybe she you know, was too she horny. was looking, she was the real person who was looking at his cum gutter. Exactly. Whatever, <laughs> his that's like on her. Area. She was the horny one. Exactly. That's on her. 
<laughs> she basically came up to my desk and was like, your presentation made me horny. <laughs> How am I supposed to teach when I'm unspeakably wet? We need to. Because of your presentation on <laughs> skateboarding. <laughs> okay, oh, Christy. Yeah. Pilgrim High School. <laughs> yes. First of all, was your mascot a pilgrim? It was a pilgrim patriot. No, it was a patriot. So you were the were pilgrim the- patriots. <laughs> Which I'm not saying this out loud and I don't quite understand it, but no, we, we weren't pilgrims. We were patriots. I don't really know. We so did, we, we looked so exactly the like the high new school patriots. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. And our Is mascot there... looked like a patriot, like the new England patriot. It was just like a patriot. Okay. So there was no, because when you said <laughs> the pilgrim patriots, I thought it was like a combination <laughs> Like on the Mayflower? Yeah, so he has like the hat. I wish it was. I wish, but no, it was just the, we were just the Patriots. Hmm. Um, And I, you think that I'd really, I haven't thought about that in so long, but I was very spirited. And so like for pep rallies and things at our school, I would like and see them. Like I, I had a lot of school spirit so it's so ironic that the first question you asked me is like what's your mascot and I was like I don't know <laughs> like if you know you would have been like the history of the mascot is actually extremely interesting <laughs> yeah we yeah we were the pilgrim patriots yep that and was it what this, this is my classic beginning of the pod question but what flavor of high school is pilgrim high school like where is it located public private sports focused theater but like what what's the vibe oh so it was it was in the burbs and it was public Mm -hmm. so we I lived in Warwick which is right Warwick Rhode Island which is right Mm -hmm. outside of Providence which is like the big city um but it was a public high school not the nicest high school like I think in terms of like public schools like it was due for an upgrade (laughs) um but and and yeah it was pretty I think it's interesting because we had some, you know, there were some kids that were at the school that were more well off. They lived mm-hmm. in Governor Francis, which was like the nice neighborhood. That sounds like it would be the nice neighborhood. <laughs> I know, Governor, Governor Francis. Francis. <laughs> it, it was the name of like a neighborhood. And then, and but then there were also kids, you know, kind of like me and, uh, who who were definitely like lower mm-hmm. lower middle class or um but lots of different walks of life I think I graduated with 278 kids okay so not a ton not yeah. a ton of people I feel like it's not a huge I feel like for a public school I think my high school I actually you know what I'm not even gonna say because I'm terrible at estimating numbers and I have yeah <laughs> I, no I am idea. too, actually. Watch it. Actually, I graduated with like thousands. I think <laughs> it was only 270 something. I don't even think it was 300. So it was kind of like I knew pretty much everyone when it was yeah. graduation time and they're walking across the stage. I knew everyone and we all went to like the same uh, middle school. Well, we called it a junior high school. It was just uh, seventh and eighth grade. Yes. And then so, yeah, it was Aldridge Junior High School, which no longer is, exists. And then we all went to Pilgrim together. So where did teen Christy fit in the social world of Pilgrim High School? I was very popular. Uh, hell yeah. Like I was so, and it's hell funny. yeah, you were. <laughs> I honestly, I peaked so much in high school. It's funny because- Earlier in my teens, I went through a very awkward stage. Mm -hmm. And then later in high school, I really blossomed. And so I was, I I physically, mentally, emotionally peaked in high school. I was prom queen. I had a lot of friends. Yeah. And I was friendly though. Like I won, I won a few superlatives. (laughs) 
that I was friendliest. That was the one I was very like, yes, proud of. I think we I have think... one of your superlatives. We have a photo. We can oh, pull it yes. up. Yes. This was can from, look at it in real time. I think this was my eighth grade. So this was right before high school. <laughs> Okay. And you were, and you got funniest girl. So what do you think like earned you funniest girl? Definitely those bangs. Mm -hmm. I think that they took one look at the bangs Mm -hmm. uh, on my face and that sweater vest and said, this girl's hysterical. But yeah, (laughs) definitely in eighth grade was when I started, it was, it was physically a very awkward time, but I started to sort of yeah, I would make a lot of jokes. It's funny because I actually had a friend, Elise named Brittany, who was so, so funny. And sometimes she would say things and I would just repeat them and say them louder. And then everyone would laugh like I said it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but I also like I did a lot of theater and, and yeah. I always was on stage. So I think people, she was a lot more shy. And I was making some jokes, but like, I was just more outgoing. Brittany really should have won. Brittany was your ghostwriter (laughs) in a way for kind of your material at that time. She really was. And I, but I mean, being funny, maybe it was the same for you in eighth grade. It's just like quoting Ace Ventura. Like, it's not like you're coming up with material. It's like you're bending over and talking out of your butt and like, that was, oh, wow. Christy's so funny. She can do Ace Ventura. (laughs) So, and also, so if you were doing the plays, were you playing like the funny part in the play? Yes, I was doing the funny. Yes, I did a lot of like youth theater outside of high school. Mm -hmm. And then I would do things in school. So I would always do talent shows or I would play the funny parts in plays. Um, That's another way to do it. Yeah, I was very outgoing. Yeah, so that I feel like that's part, like part of being funniest is sort of a PR campaign you have to wage for yourself where it's like, you've heard me on the announcements, you've seen me in the pep rally. (laughs) You have to get your material out to the people, like you have to hustle really hard. (laughs) I wish that I, I was always so, it's so funny, I was so jealous of the girl who did the announcements at school. I wish that I did the announcements, but I did Taylor Guerin, former guest on the pod, did the announcements. So we had one person who did the announcements. Uh, so that's that's important like you know if they had like a good voice and they were confident with like reading like welcome students what? yeah assembly in the uh, yeah in the auditorium at fifth period like oh I would love to have been that person at least I'm not proud of this but I had a bit of an attitude because I did theater outside of my high school which was like the youth theater like I felt like my high school theater was never as good as my theater on the side. So I would always, you know, I wasn't as concerned about the high school plays because I was like, oh, I'm I'm doing summer theater. Like and that's I'm, how I was. I'm sure that like you telegraphed that to the, <laughs> to the other students. Like, oh, they knew, they knew. And I, I was such a bitch. Sometimes I was like, I was really nice, but I'm actually, I wanted to to tell you about this. Mm-hmm. And yes. I just have a couple, I told you I was friendliest and mm-hmm. I was friendly because I did drama club. So I was friends with a lot of like the dorky, nerdy people. And I also had a very popular boyfriend, <gasps> which made me very popular but I have a couple of memories. My boyfriend cheated on me in high Whoa. school with a with a lower classman. And I have memories where I was, me and my friends were so mean to this girl. Yes. And I regret it. I later apologized to her because I was like, I was mean. And it's so funny because at the time we're like, oh, we hate this girl. When really I should have been like, my boyfriend's just as guilty, if not right? more guilty. Yeah, I had that in mid- in middle school and high school too. I really internalized that like other girls are your enemy thing. Yes. And having like really contentious relationships with the other women in my life. And I'm very glad to have shed that 
100% in my life now. And yeah. like, truly, if there are teenagers who listen to this podcast, that is the one thing that I'm like, don't get into that. Other girls um, are your friends. Be I know. Friends with the other Be girls. friends with all of them. Like, it's so challenging. And it's hard. I- it's so hard and I feel awful for this girl and how, you know, I, and it was funny because I never really was the one spearheading these takedowns, mm-hmm. but I wasn't stopping it. I was kind of no. just letting it happen. And also that's how it goes in high school is like your friend right. takes down underclassmen who kissed your boyfriend so that when someone needs to take her person down like you go around and do that and it's like exactly so how did the cheat go down like how did you find find out that it happened what where did it happen that's such a good question it happened on a school trip uh overseas they went to like italy And it happened. And then I came back and he told me about it. And also it's high school. So this cheating is very like PG. It's like nothing. Yeah. (laughs) So it's not like. They went to Italy and they kissed. (laughs) I was devastated. Oh, of course. But I kept dating this guy because he was like my boyfriend. Like we had dated from middle school up until he went to college Oh, so it was whoa. like a significant relationship and oh yeah and and she she was nice too and sweet and like oh uh, I, I remember I went up to her locker one day and I told her that I knew and I said to her and I'll never forget what I said because I wasn't like that this was big for me but I went up to her and I said if I see you talking to him and I said these words verbatim the shit is going to hit the fan <laughs> Like, I don't know. I must have heard it from like a TV show or something. I don't know where I came off saying that. I mean, that would have scared me. Like, if someone walked up to me in high school and said that to me, I would be like, fuck, this girl's going to clock me. (laughs) I was so, and one time, like, I I went over to his house after school and I saw she messaged him on AIM. And I was like, you talk to her on AIM aim like oh. and it was a big like because that was you know we texted but a lot of our communication was through instant oh, yeah. messaging oh and like the most I think I mean to this day the most passionate m- emotional communications I've ever had were via AIM like over the summer with a boy I've talked to one time yeah and just like pouring my soul <laughs> out to this person and like the next time I see him I'll be like hey <laughs> that's so true one time, one time over the summer there was this really cute boy that went to the all boys high school Ugh. and I so I had dated this guy pretty much all you know throughout my teenage years but we, we it was on and off we would break up mm-hmm. and during one of our off times there was this like heartthrob guy who now is like a country artist living in Nashville but he uh, I remember I was crushing on him so bad that I, this summer there was a big carnival. I followed him around. I asked him for his phone number and then he said no, but he'd give me his AIM screen name. And I was oh. like, okay. <laughs> I get, I mean, you know what? Like, I it's get like, it. Oh. <laughs> Aim is a more controllable thing. Maybe he's got like weird parents who monitor That's his true. communications. Oh, you would have been a good friend. I could have used you at that at the carnival that I was at. Oh where no, I was back devastated. then I would have been like, "Fuck him!" Nah! And like, <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> I'm gonna kick stuff. <laughs> like, <I> just <laughs> but yeah, I get that this trick I saw on Jackass, Christy. <laughs> like, like, horrible. <laughs> this trick oh but like that I think that happening kind of sums up my personality I don't know where it came from but I was I had a lot of confidence as a teen in my in my you know eighth grade ninth grade not so much but I found it in high school mm-hmm. and I was really outgoing were you friends with teachers like what was your relationship <sighs> with the administrative staff they either loved me, loved me, loved me, or there were a few that did not like me because I would talk back. 
Mm. So it was I was a, real a talk back too. Really? Yeah, I was like, honestly, I I had I just had like an authority issue, obviously, yes, based on too. literally everything I've laid out about my teenage self. I had an authority problem, and like, I like genuinely thought it was mean of my teacher to ask me to do math. <laughs> I was like, this is actually fucked up. It's seven fifteen. <laughs> And one time I did a school talent show and I would do the talent show and I would perform as Britney Spears oh. every year. And one time we got to do it during like a school assembly. They chose a couple acts and I did this Britney dance. And looking back, it was pretty vulgar. I was like dry humping the ground. And then my math teacher was like, does your mother know that you're doing those moves? And then I remember I said to her, my mother choreographed those moves even though she didn't but I thought it was a good <laughs> comeback I was like she choreographed those moves and then I got detention because I talked my back mom's to her. a slut too <laughs> <laughs> jokes on you <laughs> we're a family of sluts <laughs> and so you got detention for that I for did. saying I your mom choreographed the dance <laughs> It was like talking back. Like I talked back and I did say it with an attitude. I got yeah. to a few times because I would talk back. Did you ever get like, did you get in trouble? I got in trouble. I didn't get detention, but I feel like my high school didn't do detention like that. But I got sent yeah. to the principal's office. Did you? That's, that's even worse. I did. I did. Well, I was caught leaving which is bad. <laughs> that's bad. Okay. That's like a big one. Yeah. I was caught leaving, which is bad, but they let us just go back. And then I was just like rude. So I would always have like, like I had a, an a, a ongoing issue with my algebra teacher that ended up having to like go to the principal's office to like mediate between the two of us. <laughs> like the relationship had devolved to such a bad point. <laughs> other people had to step in <laughs> we're not seeing eye to eye it got really bad <laughs> really toxic between me and my algebra teacher in 10th grade because she would like ask you to solve a problem and you were like yes it was a man his name was Mr. Hubach oh uh, Mr. And... Hubach <laughs> okay Christy let's go through some of the photos that you sent oh I good make good, sure good. That we chat about them the ones that we haven't already okay oh my goodness this so, is a great one <laughs> Is this prom? Oh, this was my freshman. So I think this one and then one other photo I sent you were mm -hmm. sort of like pre-transformation to a cool person. So this was like definitely my freshman or sophomore year. Um, and I remember I borrowed this dress because <laughs> I normally didn't buy dresses because I couldn't, mm -hmm. we couldn't really afford them. So I would borrow people's dresses and I got my hair done though and I remember thinking it looked incredible. I, I I want we need to break down this style for the people who are listening to the audio version so let's say fully straight pin straight full frontal bangs <laughs> complete forehead straight bangs and then um like a bouffant of curls <laughs> just the curl like like half up but mm -hmm. picture everything cur like like a lion's mane yes a lion's I showed mane the hairdresser a photo of a lion and they said <laughs> say no more fam and they just went to town it, it does the curls are similar to in wizard of oz when the lion gets <laughs> his hair done and he has a little ribbon <laughs> oh my god it actually is <laughs> It looks just like that. And like, and that's my sweet date, Voody, who Is was a friend popular? of mine. Okay. No, he was actually very popular. We both were popular despite mm -hmm. what you would look at and see. I think he has like a Tasmanian devil hitting a baseball tie <laughs> on, which was, which felt right to wear to this mm -hmm. dance. So wait, this was actually a homecoming dance. We were friends. Um, and also look at the, in the background, this was our set decoration. It's a dead plant with <laughs> clearly with lights on it that aren't lit Christmas tree lights that are not lit. It's they like, probably put the lights up and they this. were like, 
oh, you can't actually take pictures in front of lights. Yeah, like this is bad to have it backlit. These like awful silver drapes. Like there's just mm. nothing right about this picture. And it's just, I, I, but I remember thinking that I had never looked more beautiful. <laughs> You really look like a baby too. Like you're so yeah. You it's a toddler's and tiara energy. Like and you're like, so little yeah. and you're so dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> and like my braces, which you can't really tell, but like I just also didn't really know about makeup. So I just have like bronzer on. Yes. And my braces, which I had braces for like God, for like about four years a full mouth of braces. Uh, but this was before, and this that's my natural hair color, which is like, it, it looks brown, but I guess it was like a dark blonde. Yeah. It was just like, and I didn't have boobs. Like I just developed so rapidly sort and of like, after what this year? time. Like, was it one of those things where like Christy went away for the summer and came back a woman? <laughs> or <laughs> I think it kind of was junior into into senior mm -hmm. I think They're that like, is why got I started boots at theater camp yeah <laughs> like I just totally oh god but I look at this and I'm just like wow this this is a so clearly a virgin who is just trying her best you know like yes and he looks so sweet too his clothes are enormous he's wearing Huge clothes. <laughs> I didn't even realize that until you said it. They're so big. They're easily too tight. They're easily two or three sizes too large. And you Which can tell was from the, the style sleeve. It yes. was the style. It was like every boy I knew just wore <laughs> enormous clothes. <laughs> Like you can see on his arm, the the part of his shirt where his shoulder should be, that's almost at his elbow. Like it's just, <laughs> it's, it, the clothes are huge. The pants are huge. <laughs> I remember being like, wow, Voodie looks good. Yeah. Like oh this God, was like my, so this is, he was so sweet and he a oh, great everyone loved him he looked sweet. just a sweet guy nice guy friendly guy so uh yeah this was fun this was our homecoming dance all right <laughs> let's look at this next photo here okay oh. <laughs> this is fun you're in like a all denim I'm a denim beast in oh. this picture so this is I think my senior year this okay, is when I was gonna say this girl <laughs> very different from the last girl that we isn't saw. it insane that if that's just like a year or two years that's how different I the, look the change like I mean it, this is crazy to say but like the change in your body your actual physical body is like oh right puberty that's wild <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> Like the braces are off. The hair yes. is blonde. My hair was amazing. Your hair is blonde now. It's uh, and it's long and Bangs I had long gone. layers. The layers are gone. Now I should describe this outfit. So this was a hot night dance, which is so inappropriate. I don't know why we had them. And everyone just dressed like like little strippers like that's my <laughs> best friend Kristen mm -hmm. who you can see has a dollar bill in her thong oh and my god you can see she has was a dollar a bill sponsored event oh it was, yeah it was a hot night dance so naturally I went to rainbow shop and bought a denim suit a denim one-piece suit with a matching cowgirl hat that says sexy because that's what I was and there's like silver graffiti on my denim one piece suit and I'm wearing platform silver heels yeah this I mean the girl before <laughs> virgin this girl Fucks. fully um, the madam of a brothel like <laughs> absolutely running like <laughs> That's what I did after drama club. I'd go to my <laughs> brothel and I would run shit. And I, I, I like it. Yeah. And that was Jim Reynolds, who I will tell both Kristen and Jim, they'll definitely listen to the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, he was the, 
and that he was not my boyfriend. Again, these are all men that weren't the guy I dated, but Jim Reynolds was the most popular, best looking uh, athlete at the school. And you could tell, like, look at him. You're like, this is a cool guy. Like, yeah. Again, he's like, what is this denim beast doing humping, dry humping me with reckless abandon? But- and you know what? His <laughs> shirt fits. His shirt is the right damn size. <laughs> that his arms right where it's supposed to be. This is a man. This is a, a man, man who's in, the, in, in his stride. <laughs> and like, you could tell, you can look at his arm. Like he's got hair on that arm. Mm-hmm. Like Jim, he is a man. A man with and- clothes that fit. Then put the clothes that fit. And we would, Kristen and I would just, she's my best, best, best friend. We would just, we were obsessed with Jim and we would, we clearly were tag teaming him, grinding on him. The way I would grind in front of the teachers who would sponsor the dance is beyond me. I don't know what I was thinking. And I, re- I remember you would grind on these high school boys. I remember feeling boners yes, and like not knowing really what it was, but kind of knowing that it was a boner, but like, yeah, it was so weird. Also, how surreal of an experience must it have been to like be a chaperone at these dances and these kids are just like, like rubbing their genitals on each other. And it's like, okay, at what point do we stop them are we gonna it's let them so come true. or what's happening here <laughs> like <laughs> it's we... so true I just we were so I was so inappropriate I get and clearly I get embarrassed when I look back and see how much I how just I crossed the line so many times like I really truly did but this was a night like just the thought like even Kristen like she wore like a cute tube top and like a skirt and then something within me said no no don't do that Christy get a denim cowgirl suit it's hot night though it's hot night it was (laughs) hot night and I was like you know what I love a theme don't threaten me with a theme because I'm gonna buy a cowgirl hat (laughs) (laughs) all right so let's talk about the end the end of high school for you so how was your like college search process who did you when you were Christy's walking across the stage at graduation who did you understand yourself to be what was your like oh god that's a great so I was my whole life hell bent on moving to New York City after high school Mm -hmm. and I had auditioned and applied to go to different schools in New York and that's all I wanted was to come to New York City and I remember hearing my mom and dad one night talk about I remember it was like Mary Mount Manhattan I wanted Mm -hmm. to go to or like Wagner College or NYU and these are all schools that I tried out for yes and And I remember I heard my mom and dad talking about how difficult it would be for them and how, and my mom was saying that maybe they could like refinance the house. And I remember they were really upset, just getting emotional, Mm -hmm. being disappointed because they knew how much it meant to me. So I pretended like I, like I changed my mind and oh. I went to, I, t- I went, I had a scholarship to go to the University of Rhode Island, which I went to for 20 minutes until I dropped <laughs> out. And then I, I worked a bunch of full-time jobs and ended up paying my own way. And I moved to the city when I was nine, when I was like 19 and a half. Oh my God. That's an yeah. incredible story. First of all, that's so sweet. That's <laughs> such like a precious moment I mean a precious and a sad moment what was it that you hated about University of Rhode Island just everything everything I just never wanted to be there and it's funny because I remember going to the orientation and liking it and then I got a part in the play Mm -hmm. and everyone in the theater department was so mad because freshmen shouldn't get parts And because I got a part, this girl that was a senior didn't get a part in the, Mm -hmm. in her last musical. So everyone 
hated me and I right. hated it. And I was like, this is, I went home for Thanksgiving and never went back. So I truly went to school for, for two months. That, oh, that's wild. So when you were, did you, did you go to school in the city when you got to New York? I did. So I went to an acting school, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Oh, okay. AMDA, which is, I I went there for a few years and also dropped out. So dropping out has become a bit of a thing that I'm famous (laughs) for. Um, But yeah, but I always, I knew I, I wanted to be an actress on Broadway. That was what my goal was mm-hmm. always in high school when I was younger everything was about being on Broadway and doing musicals that was like yeah. all I knew as I did musicals what was your favorite musical that you did in high school <laughs> um we would constantly choose terrible musicals to do like I was Dorothy in our high school's entirely Caucasian production of the Wiz you oh know oh my god I thought you were gonna say Wizard of Oz and then you were like entirely Caucasian I'm like oh no it's happening oh it's oh, bad no. like we had no business doing these shows but so I was um oh actually Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors oh that's such a good part such a good part somewhere that's green is so fun to sing that was like my song that I would sing to get into you know if I ever needed a song to sing for anything I would I would sing that song and I but yeah but I'm 35 and I've been in New York now since I was 19. Wow that's wild I feel like what is that like to be in New York as a 19 year old? I look back, it's so exciting, but I was so naive. And I think to myself now, how lucky I was that I didn't get kidnapped and taken and (laughs) roofied and killed. There were so many situations where I was like, I was way too trusting of people. I was very stupid. I think I made a lot of stupid decisions, but I think somebody was definitely looking out for me. Yeah. Okay. Christy, this has been an amazing episode. I'm going to ask you the last question that I ask all of our guests. um, And that is, if you could talk to teen Christy today, what would you tell her? Uh, I would tell her that, oh God, that's such a good question. Um, This is when the people always cry in encore. (laughs) you know my brain went to sort of two things so I'll kind of talk through it I think the first would be something that I wish I were better at now that sort of started for me then which was worrying and anxiety mm-hmm. like my teachers would call me like a worry wart when I was in high school and I would kind of just laugh at it but I look back and that was sort of the start of I'm very uh, over analytical and I do have a lot of anxiety. So I think that I would look back and try to tell myself, especially as a teen, that you're going to have your whole life to worry about things Mm -hmm. and that you don't need to take everything quite as seriously as you were taking it and and to sort of lighten up a little bit. Um, And just, you know, for better or worse, just sort of like a reminder that it's it's temporary. Like if anyone's listening that is in high school or younger, like whether you could be the bell of the ball or you could be somebody who eats their lunch in the bathroom, but like, it really doesn't matter because it's not, it's not the real world and it's temporary and you will come out of it. And then you will be able to be whoever you want to be. You you can reinvent yourself a million times in life. And I I think that that's like a cool thing to know. Yeah, that's, it's so interesting the way that when you're in high school, it feels like, I mean, it feels like this enormous chunk of your life because it is at that time. And then now that I'm 30, it's like the smallest little blip of time that happened. But when I remember, I remember then time felt so long, like a single school year felt like so much. (laughs) so much has happened (laughs) I know I remember just like looking at the clock and feeling like the days lasted so long and thinking like oh my my birthday's in two weeks that's forever Mm -hmm. like and now it's like I think especially this year with the fucking pandemic and everything but it just goes by so quickly and 
it, it, it's not, yeah, it's, it's so, it's so nuts. I get very nostalgic. Like I get happy when I think about my high school years, but, um, but, 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 you know, I think I'd also say too, that I like getting older yes. and don't be scared about it. Like, don't be like, Oh no. Like I used to be like, Oh, like 25, like what a grandma, but it's great. You learn about yourself and mm-hmm. you know, you get you give less of a shit every day. Yes. Yes. Awesome. I, I, I really do feel like I, I turned 30 in May, like during the pandemic. And I do feel like a switch flipped uh, like in my brain of not giving a fuck about stuff oh. that really put took a huge mental toll on me like a year or two prior. I'm so happy to hear that. Honestly, at least that was sort of my experience. Like it wasn't until I was maybe 30 or 31 or even 32. Like I remember being in my late twenties and being very different and and, and having a real change happen. So I that like frantic feeling of like, what am I doing? What's everyone else doing? Where am I going? Et cetera. Like something, it's not like I never feel like that anymore, but like there was a slowdown that happened. Good. I'm so happy to hear that. I know. I maybe it's that thing of like, well, I can't be on any of these lists of young people anymore, so I don't need to (laughs) worry about it. I'm not gonna be on this stupid list. (laughs) It's happened. Totally. I remember having a feeling when I got out of high school that I was like, well, I'm never gonna get pregnant in high school. Like it happened. I made it. (laughs) I didn't get pregnant. I made it through that one. (laughs) Yes. Yes. You know, and I think that even being a comedian, I think that more so, and this might be a little naive too, but I think more so than other professions, there was a lot about our industry or the entertainment industry that feels like high school sometimes. Oh, yeah. Whether it's like the lists and the popularity contest and there is this kind of thinking of what's what's this person doing in that and like influencing. Yeah. So and parties and events that are like social slash professional and it's like what's going on? uh, Yeah. Sometimes I just wish that I could just like be a hairdresser and just like (laughs) go to hairdressing. I'm sure that shit is happening there too. I know that's what I tell myself. It's like you know I always feel like we're so unique, but it's like it happens everywhere. It really does. I know. All right. I feel like that's a perfect place for us to end it. Christy, you were an amazing guest. It was so great chatting with you. And for everybody listening at home, this has been the Roast of Your Teenage Self podcast.